quantum field theory in the situ space and uh, one, what can we do about uh, these problems by resorting to non-perturbative treatments. So, okay, a quick uh, outline of, uh, of my talk. I will just skip this. So, why uh, are we interested in uh, uh, studying quantum field theory in the Citrus space? Well, as uh, probably most of you already know, the, the Citrus space is like the leading order approximation to the inflationary stage of the early universe. Uh, and I, I could also add that uh, in the, to the current uh, stage of the accelerating universe. And uh, so, uh, going back to, to the early universe, we are interested in the evolution of fluctuation of uh, quantum fields. And uh, to be able to say how these fluctuations behave at late times in the, in the inflationary stage. Now, uh, in particular, uh, spectator fields, which are the ones that do not uh, drive inflation, are the ones that we'll see uh, at the Sitter uh, background, which is fixed. And they just evolve in this fixed background. So, uh, as I will uh, tell you in a few moments, there are several, sorry, several unsettled questions with regard to interacting fields in this, uh, in this uh, the Sitter space. So, just to brief, a brief reminder, uh, the Sitter space, uh, can be written in this, uh, in, in this way. I mean, the metric can be expressed in this way in, in what we call the cosmological patch, which is only the expanding half of the Sitter space. And uh, what we want to do is to add a scalar field, uh, minimally coupled, and with uh, a self-interaction. So here I, I, I put a, a mass, but in, in a few moments we will see that uh, what happens, what different values of, of the mass. So, since we want to um, calculate, uh, I mean, study the fluctuations at late times, what we need to do is calculate late time correlators. So, things, things like these kind of, uh, of uh, quantities. So, in order to do this, we need uh, the so-called closed time path uh, formalism, or also called the in-in formalism, which allows us to compute expectation values uh, rather than uh, for example, uh, scattering amplitude, amplitudes. This is a necessary uh, inconvenience of the uh, evolving background, time-dependent background. Okay, so what kind of, of problems do we uh, get into when we try to do this? So consider a, a free field with a mass equal to zero. When we compute the, this uh, late uh, time two-point correlator, function, we see that it grows with cosmic time. So if, uh, if time goes on uh, for long enough, these fluctuations eventually grow at the point that we don't longer uh, control uh, what, what happens with the background. We cannot ignore other uh, effects. This uh, can be traced to the fact that for a massless free field, there is no de Sitter invariant vac vacuum for the quantum field theory. However, okay, for it, there are several things we can uh, relax here. Uh, let's assume for a moment that we have a, a small mass, but different from zero. Now we see that the correlator function is no longer uh, growing with time. It's just a constant but it has this sort of uh, behavior with the, with the mass. So for small masses compared to the Hubble rate, this will be very big. So okay, for free fields, it might be not very important, but once we turn on interactions, we see that the perturbation theory has uh, this uh, loop factor in which you, we don't only have uh, the, inter the coupling constant, but also this enhancement uh, with the, the mass of the field. So, let's say for masses below more or less this, this amount, we are in problems because our loop factor might be uh, very large. So the perturbation theory seems to break down in these cases. So, what can we do about it? We can resort to non-perturbative treatments. 
These are uh, some, uh, a few of them, there are many more, and I will briefly uh, talk about this, uh, these three cases. So in the first case, uh, this is a, a, a non-perturbative approach for the inning uh, theory, I mean the, the, the usual quantum field theory in the theater space. What we do is to generalize the standard effective action to a, a new effective action, which we call the 2PI effective action. This uh, new quantity has not only, it, it not only depends of the mean value of the field, but also on the exact propagator. So we treat the exact propagator as uh, a new degree of freedom independent from the other. So formally, we can write down this, uh, this thing in this way, where this last bit uh, is a sum over a lot of uh, diagrams with uh, this particular property of being too particularly reductible. But it more, most importantly, they, uh, we build them using the exact propagator. So uh, to give you an example, in our uh, lambda phi to the fourth uh, theory, we get these diagrams at the two and three loops. But remember that now these internal lines get, have the exact propagator inside them. So uh, all of these diagrams in particular, Let's look only at the two-loop uh, part. We see that uh, even at, at the leading order, these uh, are very technically difficult to, to treat. In particular, this, this uh, diagram over here is uh, non-local. And since the, it depends on the exact propagator, it's not much we can do about it. So what we, uh, we do as, as a guess is to keep only the local part of the of the, the 2PI effective action. This is called the Hartree approximation. And uh, under this approximation, what we are doing, si since again, we have the exact propagator in inside here, is uh, doing an infinite uh, resumation of the so-called su super daisy diagrams of the standard perturbation theory. So it's as if we were summing all those diagrams from the standard perturbation theory. So these diagrams have the property, as I said, they are local, so they dress the propagator, and we get a non-perturbative correction to the mass. This uh, approximation becomes exact in the large n limit, but for a different uh, value of n, uh, I mean n uh, being uh, the number of fields, if we were to put uh, n, n fields like this one, uh, there are all sorts of subtleties regarding the renormalization of, uh, of this uh, effective action, and uh, I don't have time to go through that uh, now, but if you're interested, we can talk ab about it uh, later in the coffee break. But we have done some, uh, some research in, in this, uh, regarding these uh, problems. Okay, so moving forward, now I have two equations of motion, with, uh, but in respect with the field and with respect to the propagator, and these equations of motions uh, show that, uh, for example, the propagator picks up this mass, and this mass is not the three-level mass of the, of the field, but rather the, the one that it is given by this self-consistent gap equation. And this is because I, I use the exact propagator inside here to compute what this mass should be. So this uh, gap equation has, has solutions that uh, allow me to set the, the three-level mass to zero, something I, I wasn't able to do in the, in the standard perturbation theory, and I get a dynamical mass that goes like this at the leading order in, in the coupling constant. So what is interesting here is that now, uh, even if I try to put the mass to zero, uh, the interactions uh, give me a dynamical mass, uh, and it has a non-analytical lambda dependence, which is a signal of a non-perturbative uh, result. So. Well, so, so much for the, the 2PI effective action. Now, uh, I will briefly tell you about a, a different approach, which is called the stochastic inflation. Here, the idea is to, okay, so since the, the, the modes of the field are continuously exceeding the horizon and going classical, from the point of view of the large modes, uh, they see as, uh, as if uh, there was a uh, source of uh, stochastic noise. I mean, these modes that comp continuously go out of the horizon uh, give them random kicks. So we can write down a Langevin equation for the long modes with certain properties, at, at least at leading order, the, the, the noise is caution. 
And then from here, we can write down a focal plank equation for, for a PDF for the field in, in, uh, as a function of time. And uh, in particular, at late times, it looks like this. So uh, we are able to calculate late time expectation values in this, in this way using this PDF. And we, uh, we arrived at this uh, sort of results uh, when we uh, consider the massless case. Uh, for our lambda phi to the fourth uh, theory. And from here, in comparison to the free uh, field uh, result, we identified uh, this dynamical mass and found it to be like this. So as you can see, the, the, the lambda dependence is also non-analytical. It depends on the square root of lambda. But the numerical factor is different from the one that uh, we found in the previous, uh, fr from the 2PI effective action. Okay, so, so far we have these two approaches. Uh, there, are no, there is no uh, clear way how to uh, improve uh, systematically this calculation to go beyond this order in lambda. So we can try uh, dif different, uh, different approaches. So finally, uh, I would like to talk about the Euclidean, the citrus space approach. What we do here is, um, so, uh, instead of considering the expanding patch of the sitter, uh, now we consider the global coordinates. This covered the whole of uh, the sitter space. Uh, we perform an analytical continuation to imaginary time. And then we uh, need to compactify this uh, imaginary time dimension in order to get a regular metric. And the result of the, oh, this whole process is that we end up in uh, a Euclidean sphere. Here I put it, uh, D is the number of, of dimensions, but uh, usually four. <laughs> okay, so now that we are uh, in this uh, sphere, we can uh, do quantum field theory. What we do is uh, we expand everything in spherical harmonics, or the generalization of uh, spherical harmonics to D dimensions. Uh, for example, the Euclidean action now looks like this, where here is the interaction part, and this is the free, free part. And from here, we can build uh, our free propagator, and it looks like this. So the interesting thing is that now, this is a, a sum over a discrete set of uh, modes. I mean, this is spherical harmonics. So it's easy to identify where lies the problem when the mass is very small or it goes to zero. The, the culprit is the zero mode, the one that uh, related to L equal to zero. And it's the only part that diverges when the mass goes to zero. So there is only one mode responsible. We weren't able to do this in the original um, in, in theory. So now that we identified the, the, the problem, we can treat it non-perturbatively. So what we do is we split we, uh, the field in the zero mode plus the rest. And we can write down a generating functional. But now, since phi uh, naught is a constant, there is no kinetic term for, for phi naught. And the path integral becomes just an ordinary integral. So for example, for a massless field, it looks like this. This is something that you can uh, put inside Mathematica, and it will give you a result. So we can compute it exactly. OK, so moving forward, from this uh, generating function, we can uh, compute the two-point correlation function. Uh, again, read the mass from there. And we arrive to this result, uh, which, if you, if you recall, is the same as the stochastic uh, procedure. So very nice. It seems like uh, we are uh, getting uh, to, to, to reproduce a result that was uh, done in, in the uh, Lorentzian, uh, uh, the citrus space. But the, the, the advantage here of the Euclidean formalism is that now we can go beyond that and compute uh, corrections that come from the rest of the modes, the non-zero zero modes. So uh, what we do is split the interaction uh, part of the action in the part that only depends on the of phi naught and the rest. This is the part that we compute uh, exactly 
uh, non-perturbatively, and the rest is what we use to expand and, and define our new perturbation theory. So the new uh, in, uh, generating functional looks like this, uh, and now we expand only on this S uh, tilde. So uh, by doing this, we get a new perturbation theory in which phi naught scales as uh, lambda to the minus one fourth, and uh, phi hat scales as, as one. The, so for example, a term, in, uh, an interaction term like this will scale as, as square root of lambda. So that's good because we, we know that our result has this uh, non-analytical dependence. So we compute next to linear order corrections to the dynamic mass. Uh, and in particular, we do it for the ON symmetric model. So we, we can then check for n equal one or n equal uh, infinite uh, different uh, known results uh, computed in the in the in in formalism, and uh, we did we did it in two ways. We can compute it uh, from the two point correlation function of, of the zero mode, but also we can look at the effective potential and and check that the quadratic part is the same gives the same result. So the result looks like this. Here n is the number of fields again and um, G hat is the propagator of the non-zero modes, and it has the property of being regular for uh, any value of m, at least uh, if it's uh, for smaller m than uh, the Hubble constant, but in particular we can set m to zero here without any problem, since we separated the, the zero mode. And these quantities here are just uh, correlation functions of the zero modes computed with the zero, the, the zeta not uh, generating functional. So this can be computed exactly. So now we can compare the, our results with uh, the in, -in uh, quantum field theory. For example, for mass equal to zero, it looks like this. So this was the linear result. Now this is the, the, the correction. And also we can, for example, set the three level mass to a negative value and see what happens. So uh, what we get is that the dynamical mass picks up uh, this, uh, this form and uh, it's, it's rather easy to see that in general this will be positive. So what we have is that we started with a negative three-level mass but we ended up with a positive uh, dynamical mass. So uh, we can uh, interpret this as a symmetry restoration. Okay, so uh, in any case, these, uh, these are computed in large limits, so we, can, where we trust the in, -in uh, computation, and we see that they agree with the Euclidean uh, approach. Okay, so just uh, a brief summary. Um, so the 2 pi effective action provides uh, a resumation of an in infinite subset of Feynman diagrams in the in, -in uh, quantum field theory, but it's te technically difficult to go beyond the local approximation, and this approximation only is justified in the Larsen limit. So uh, other non-perturbative uh, approaches, in particular the, the non-perturbative treatment of the zero mode in Euclid and the Citrus space, allows for uh, a systematic way of computing corrections, and uh, we don't uh, need to put uh, the number of fields to infinity. We trust the result for uh, any value of n. So it's, it would be more general. And, um, okay, so at the leading infrared order, the Euclidean and stochastic calculations also agree. And uh, this is uh, just a consistency check. Uh, okay, so uh, just to finish, some open questions relating this uh, sort of uh, approaches. Uh, we actually are not sure whether the Euclidean quantum field theory is equivalent to the in formalism in a, a strict sense uh, because we are only comparing one, one thing here, the two-point correlation function in the ER limit. Uh, there is uh, some nice discussion uh, in, the, in the massive case. Uh, they compute diagrams, so at the diagrammatic level they, they see that this uh, agree. Uh, we, we have several uh, questions. We can go beyond the effective potential to compute the full effective action. If we could, can do that, then we, we will trust that the, the two approaches are actually equivalent. And to me, the, one of the most interesting questions would be, 
if I go to the in in uh, theory, so I have Lorentzian and the Sitter space, uh, I have a continuum of modes. And this continuum doesn't allow me to pick up only one and say this is the, the zero mode that is causing me the, the problems. So can I identify someone similar to the zero mode and, uh, and treat it non-perturbatively in a systematic way? Well, we don't know. OK, also some uh, questions about the stochastic picture and its equivalence to the in, -in uh, QFT. But uh, OK, we can talk. Uh, if anyone is interested, we can talk about it a little bit. And finally, if we can make progress only from the side of the in, -in uh, quantum field theory uh, and go beyond the local contributions. So that's all. Thank you very much.